Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Khadim India Q3 and 9 month FY23 earnings conference call organized by Orient Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nachiket Kale. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Kale. Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome to the conference call. Today from the management of Khadim India Limited, we have the promoter, Mr. Siddharth Roy Berman, Chairman and Managing Director. Mr. Ritik Roy Berman, Old Time Director and Mr. Indraji Chaudhary, CFO. Before we proceed with the call, just a small disclaimer that this conference call will contain some forward-looking statements, which are as per the base, as per the beliefs and expectations of the company as of today. Actual results may vary vary in the future depending on multiple factors. A detailed safe harbor statement is mentioned in the company's investor presentation also. I hope everyone had a chance to go through the presentation which was uploaded on the exchange. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Siddharth Roy Berman. Uh, over to you, sir. Namaskar, everybody. On behalf of Kadim India Limited, it is my pleasure to welcome you all in, to this conference call to discuss the Q3 and nine month result for the financial year 2022-23. I would like to begin by sharing an update on leadership structure of the company. Ms. Namrata, CEO has resigned from the service of the company. Creating personal reasons, the board of directors has accepted the said resignation. The day-to-day -day operation and executive leadership are being led by Mr. Ritik Roy Barman, old-time director who belongs to the promoter group, coming to performance for the quarter. After posting year-on-year -year revenue growth for six consecutive quarters, we saw a decline in the base quarter Q3 FY22. We had posted a strong growth due to unlocking of COVID. In the current physical majority of our sales for the festive season of Pujo were booked in Q2 FY23. Hence, we see a decline in sales growth Q3 FY23. Our trajectory for the year remains positive with the revenue from nine months FY23 showing a double digit growth. The raw material prices are still trending at a higher level and we are now witnessing a gradual softening. Despite the inflationary pressure of, on prices, we have maintained our gross margin above 40% with a healthy improvement. After posting our highest ever EBITDA margin in the previous quarter, we have maintained the EBITDA margin in double digits. Our focus <clears throat> remains on providing uh, trendy and vibrant products to our customers at an attractive price point. We take pride in creating to all demographic with a basket of products providing affordable fashion for all. We accept the positive trend generated this year in nine months so far to continue and aim to deliver steady growth within improving the profitability. Our endeavor to establish Pan-India presence with an asset-like strategy has taken the retail store tally to 8.38 as of December 31st. With an addition of 73 stores in nine months, FY23, the company is also capitalizing on the retail network to grow aggressively in footwear distribution and has a network 682 distribution as on December 31st. Q3 and uh, nine month financial highlights. Q3 FY23 revenue at rupees 149 crore is down year on year by 19%. However, the trend is largely positive year to date with nine month FY23 revenue 501 crore by up 15 year on year. 
15% year on year. The distribution business in which we carry the most affordable and economic product has <laughs> suffered significant headwind with muted demand in the tier two and tier three markets has registered a year, a year and year on year of 36% in Q3, FY23 and 7% in nine months, FY23. However, the retail portfolio is doing well and registered and encouraging 30% on year on year growth for nine month FY23. Gross margin for Q3 and nine month FY23 stand 41.6% and 41.2% respectively with a significant improvement almost 400 basis points across both periods. EBITDA for Q3 FY23 is down by 22% at rupees 17 crore and nine month FY23 EBITDA at rupees 56 crores registered a grow of 60%. EBITDA margin at 11.2% has been subsequently flat in Q3 and over the period nine months has improved by 320 basis points from 8% EBITDA margin in nine months FY22. The bet for the quarter was 5 crore and uh, the nine month FY23 bet at rupees 13 crore shows strong uptrend in the year so far with 250% growth year on year. So now we can proceed for the question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for <coughs> a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equiris PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, my first question is regarding the management change. Uh, now that uh, Ms. Namrata has decided to move on um, and, and, and we'll be taking care of the company from here on, do we see any... So <clears throat> there was a clear strategic path that she had guided the investors in terms of both B2B as in the franchise business uh, uh, and the retail business um, uh, and and uh, and the mass market business. So, is there any change in strategy we are looking at as such, or or will continue to build on what she has already done over last three four years? The system will be same. You know, system say Jata Chalga ka waise chalega, and uh, everywhere there is a head. Every uh, so. There will be no problem, and uh, the promoter side, Ritik and myself, uh, so there will be no problem. The strategy will remain the same for both the distribution and the retail business. So there will be no change on that side, and there is every head for every operation. So they will continue, and Ritik will overall guide the team and also take active part in the merchandising of the product. Right. So second, we are also seeing that distribution has a very solid degrowth in this quarter. And even for nine months, we have done uh, very badly. Uh, compared to last year, the first quarter was a total wipeout. Can you explain it a little bit? Karenge, Mainly the distribution business, if you see, the last year in December, there was a GST increase from January 2022. 7% to 12%. Uh, from 5% to 12%, seven percent increase. So that has uh, created a mass uptake in the month of December. So that's why in this, uh, this third quarter, we have seen a degrowth in the distribution business. And another impact is that there is a muted uh, demand. Uh, demand in the, uh, the tier two, tier three sector where the distribution business generally operate. And above all, there is also inflationary pressure in this mass market segment. So all these three has created a uh, demand down, going downward in this distribution business. 
right right <laughs> and and sir uh, uh, after seeing uh, robust gross margins uh, in distant business uh, namrata at least had articulated that we are looking at early 40s kind of gross margin in distribution business and 55 odd percent kind of gross margin in retail business in a couple of years uh, do we still stand by it See, in the retail, we stand by it. We are already doing 54% margin in retail. But in the distribution business, there is a, uh, there is a pressure in the sales price also. After the GST increase, everyone has taken a hit in the sales price. So reaching 40% uh, at present looks uh, difficult. But we will gradually try to increase the margin. We are now at 35% level. We can improve by 100 basis point in the next year. Right. And sir, my last question is on sales. Uh, management was is a very confident of doing 750 odd crores this year. Looking at what we have done uh, in in nine months, uh, I mean, I'm assuming we'll fall short of it. Uh, can you give some uh, target for next year? What are we looking at? And by when are we looking at thousand crores? That I mean, we had also mentioned publicly a few times. Yes, uh, you can see the sales that you uh, were, which is reported, it is net of GST and uh, scheme costs as per India's 115. If you see the gro gross turnover of the company this year, we'll reach 750 crores. And uh, next year, definitely in this uh, retail, we'll expect a growth of 10 to 12 percent, and in distribution around 15 percent. Uh, sorry, can you uh, can you just translate what will 750 in gross will mean in net? Uh, 750 will gross will mean around uh, GST of around average 12%. Uh, 750 will turn out to be around uh, 670 crores in net. Okay, so we'll still do around 170, 180 in the last quarter is what you're saying. Yes, yes. Next year. And, and any target for next year, sir? Next year we are uh, we are in the process of making the budget, so we uh, expect a growth of 10 to 12 percent in retail segment and 15 percent in distributions. And sir, can you talk a little bit about the competitive intensity? A lot of players in this segment are uh, had to take a price cut, significant price cut in the lower level flip flops of 150 rupees. I mean, we have seen price cuts of 10, 12 percent in that region. Uh, what kind of price cuts would we have taken this quarter? We have taken a price cut of around five to six percent in the distribution segment because there are a lot of competitors who have taken a huge price cut, but exactly. we have taken around five to six percent because our price saying, was low, lower compared to them. On a blended basis. On a blended basis. So if we were to compare our product, I mean, roughly like to like product with the largest uh, distribution player in the country, uh, uh, our like to like product will be now at a premium or at a discount or will be the same price? Let's, let's say the normal gray flip-flops. Uh -huh. We are at, at uh, 10 rupees lower than them. So they would be at 129, you would be at 190. Yes. Okay, thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Dwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, uh, sir. Uh, so my first question is, uh, you know, I'm actually last past target number, take it, so well, appear in the range of 6, 6, 10 crores to maybe we land up with 750 crores. Uh, in between, upar gaya, niche aya. Uh, and our uh, distribution, uh, we are probably one of the largest in terms of uh, the number of stores. So, sir, uh, why, why are we as a promoter satisfied with 10-12% growth? And this I'm asking because some products that may store hold hai, so 8-8% organic growth wahan se aata hai. ASC mein 3-4% growth aata hai. So, basically volume growth in the existing store, so hum factor hi nahi kar rahe hai. So, is that the real uh, on-the-ground scenario ki what am I missing? Am I missing something here? The problem that the most retailer is facing is the volume growth. Yeah. 
and we we have seen that in the last uh, in few years the footfall has grown down 30% footfall has grown down so there is a you know inorganic growth in opening new stores there is gro growth in the asp but the volume has not grown so volume there is a degrowth and the volume degrowth is not only in the retail segment it is this time has also hit in the distribution market because of the inflationary pressure that has been in the in the middle and the lower segment of the market and uh, we are also trying to tap i'm sorry i'm not able to hear ah uh, we are, we we have seen that uh, there is also a volume uh, 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 muted uh, volume in the distribution segment also okay okay so 10 12% is what i think a realistic on the retail side is abhi abhi ke scenario pe abhi ka scenario mein jo hai market ka position jo hai jo india ka inflation is situation hai usme uh, we cannot forecast more than that at present and we are we are um, hi we are also taking uh, some action because of the uh, degrowth in uh, volume that you were just mentioning so over the years uh, some of the prices of our products had become way too expensive so we want to keep our asps high we want to keep our asps high mainly in our sub brands uh, like pro and british walker but uh, when it comes to our mother brand khadims uh, we need to uh, we, we are reducing some of the prices keeping the margin as it was before in order to uh, reduce the uh, reduce the volume degrowth so that is the plan to uh, grow even more so we seem to have uh, the current participant in the line dropped from the question queue oh. we will move to the next question from the line of anish jain from jb capital please go ahead thanks for the opportunity sir so i have a couple of questions on the financial side so the first was that you know we are seeing a increase in our finance costs so just wanted to understand the reason for this and exactly uh, like is there any increase in debt in this quarter or something like that and the other one was a drop in the other expenses so maybe you are uh, comment on that yes uh, what has happened this year we have shifted one of our warehouse from bantala to panchala and factory from kajwa to uh, sirampur well uh, now the this in, uh, finance cost increase is not because of debt it is because of the india's 116 impact because now the rent is now treated as a depreciation and interest so for that reason since we sh shifted from our own warehouse to rented one so that uh, that thing has impacted the increase in finance cost this is number one and other expense is lower compared to last quarter because there is a profit element uh, there is a uh, one is the reducing of the cost of the uh, in the other segment cost are, have re reduced and there is also a profit that has been adjusted in uh, our sale of the properties Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and 1 on your touch tone phones at this time. The next question is from the line of Ishan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity. My first question is the number I want to know the number of company owned stores and the franchise stores. and the total square feet of operations we are doing in the retail in the company owned stores yeah, we have around uh, 220 company stores uh, uh, company owned stores and uh, around 500 franchises and total square feet of operations in our company owned stores ha uh, total total square feet of operation Ah, uh, generally the average square feet in a company uh, owned store is thousand uh, square feet, and in a franchise it is around seven hundred square feet. Okay, 
and there is beta margin for the retail and distribution business individually uh that we can give it one on one to one basis you make a call to our company secretary we can provide the data there okay okay and what should we expect from you for the next 3 to 5 years what should be your outlook outlook is that in the retail we tend to grow at a level of 10 to 12% and in uh, uh, franchisee uh, in distribution around 15% and we tend to have an ebitda of around 15% in the next uh, in fy 25 yes yeah, thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question you may press star and 1 The next question is from the line of Aviraj Mehta from Equus PMS. Please go ahead, sir. When you mention 15% EBITDA, is it adjusted for rent because rent is now below EBITDA or not adjusted? Like, are you saying this 15% EBITDA before paying out the rents or after paying out the rents? Before paying out the rents, the EBITDA which is around 11.2 or 3 percent, we tend to make it around 15%. Okay. Okay. So essentially, four percent in three to four percent improvement directly in the PBT margin is what you expect because that's the improvement you are expecting. And right. and where will that the sales volume? Right. But where will that come from? Because you are seeing gross margin in the uh, in the retail business is fifty three, fifty four. We can go to fifty five. And in the distribution business, also uh, improving gross margin seems difficult. So where will that four percent come from? i am considering this 4% in the span of 2 years number one yes. it will come from the economies of scale of cost because uh, when the sales volume increases the cost not increase in that manner number one and number two the increase in premiumization of the product and increase in gross margin of 1 to 1 to 2% in retail business okay बट सर अभी आपको ऐसा नहीं लग रहा है कि रिवर्स प्रीमियमाइजेशन हो रहा है इस इंडस्ट्री में मतलब पीपल आर डाउनग्रेडिंग राधर देन प्रीमियमाइजेशन यू वांट टू कैन यू कमेंट एनीथिंग ऑन दैट सर और ये ट्रेंड कब तक रहेगा कि ये टेंपरेरी फिनोमिना है आपके हिसाब से एक्चुअली प्रीमियमाइजेशन इज हैपनिंग सर स्टिल लाइक लाइक द टू लाइक राइट नाउ 60% ऑफ आवर रिटेल सेल्स इज कमिंग फ्रॉम आवर सब ब्रांड्स the sales value 60% comes from the sub brands which is pro which is pro is like a sportswear brand british walker is like premium leather brands and uh, the rest 40% is coming from uh, mother brand khadim which constitutes of mainly chappals flip flops so uh, so it has to be a uh, the, the the margin the 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 khadim brand products uh, prices have to be made a little competitive whereas the british walker or the pro the sportswear brands their premiumization will still be at play and the good news is that our sales value is more from our sub brands now than the mother brand which was little different before sure sir thank you so much i'll get back in the queue thank you participants who wish to ask questions may please press star and the one The next question is from the line of Dhwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, any uh, CEO on? Uh, on Sorry to interrupt, sir. The line for you is not very clear. We request you to please use the handset and speak closer to the mic. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is better, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I said uh, sir, under our CEO, our sales and marketing side. Sorry to interrupt. The line for you is breaking up again. Okay. Mr. Desai, if you could please move to an area with better network. I will come back. Thank you. Hello, hello, uh, Mr. Desai. If you have moved to a better network area, uh, you may proceed with your question, sir. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello.
Hello. So the line for the current participant is uh, not very clear at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one at this time. Participants who wish to ask a question may please press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. I thank all, all the participants who has joined the con call uh, and also the, um, uh, our IR team. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining the conf uh, conference call. And uh, this year, uh, this third quarter was a bit tough quarter, as we have mentioned in the speech, opening speech as well. But uh, we hope that we, we are hoping, we are seeing, uh, we are hoping for uh, better, uh, slowish, but better recovery in the months to come. So we, we will continue to perform and uh, uh, reward the investors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Khadim India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.